Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Natalie Jordan, and I am the Vice President of the Board of Directors of the Community Services, Isla Vista Community Services District, and today I'll be serving as your chair. I'd like to start with a call to order. Can you please do that for us? Yes, I'll call the roll. Uh, Director Bertrand. Director Jordan. Here. Director Brandt. I say here. Director Freeman. Here. Director Hedges. Here. Director Geis. Here. Director Thurlow. Here. Awesome. Thank you. Moving on to Agenda 1.2. Announce that the meeting is being recorded. The meeting this evening is being recorded. I'd like to make it clear from the beginning here, if you'd like to, like to speak, please ask for recognition from the chair. And I'd like to make our recognition of discussion items very clear right now. Um, there's going to be a presentation of the discussion item, a clarifying questions, public comment. We're going to go back to the board for discussion and a motion, public comment again, and then we're going to move to a vote. Moving on. We have a reminder to the directors of forms and trainings. Would you like to speak on this, Spencer? Yes, so for those directors who have still not sent me uh, copies of their certification uh, for ethics training required by Assembly Bill 1234, um, and those directors who have still not sent me copies of their certification uh, for sexual harassment training uh, required by AB 1825, uh, please do so. Uh, AB 1825 has a six month uh, from the time that you take office uh, window to do so. Uh, AB 1234, um, I believe the deadline uh, may have already occurred, I actually don't remember. Um, and, and also, uh, if you haven't sent me a copy of your Form 700, please do that as well. Um, I know a number of directors have already uh, done this, um, and I'll speak on this a little later in the agenda, but every single director has filed their Form 700 with county elections, and they are retaining copies. Uh, so if you could just forward me a copy of that, uh, that would be great. Awesome. In addition, we have the CSDA first day this week, which we will be hearing back next meeting about our CSDA, which will be doing our 1825 sexual harassment training certification. Are there any questions? Yes, Director Freeman. Um, so uh, you, uh, new on this, uh, this week's version of this is oath of office. Um, the way that my, my oath of office happened is it's that here, uh, right? yeah, <laughs> Garcelle actually watched Doss sign it and then took it to county elections. So I did okay. not have that form. So I will talk to Sheila Hess at county elections and Do get a copy. Do you think that we could get a report back next week with who yes. is still owing you forms? Can someone please make a motion to direct Director Freeman to do so with reporting back? Or like would you like to direct me? We could direct you to do that. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay, so awesome. And, so and we can, if you'd like, we can make this motion when I speak more about this specific yeah, yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Awesome. Are there any other questions? Thank you. Moving on, we have reports of me reports from members of the board. We're going to start with Director Freeman and move down the line. Um, sorry, brain. Um, there was, as I was going to say. Do you want to start on the other side and we'll yeah, move towards you? you? Awesome. Uh, I have nothing to report. Awesome. Nothing. All right. Uh, so uh, I just want to first off s s by start off by stating I apologize for not agendizing the formation committee's recommendations. Um, directly following uh, this regularly scheduled meeting, there will be a special meeting uh, where uh, there are two items uh, of consideration, both of which are uh, things that the formation committee forwarded to the full board uh, that we'll be discussing. Uh, so again, sorry about that. Um, I also wanted to report that I fulfilled a public records ask request, public records act request that was submitted by a member of the public. Uh, this isn't normally something that I would report to the board, uh, but given that we do not have policies and procedures in place for fulfilling public records act requests, I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention, um, and also bring it to everyone's attention that we don't have policies and procedures in place for that. Uh, it might be something that the policy committee would want to consider. Um, other than that, I'm excited to talk about legal counsel, um, and um, President Bertrand uh, sends his regards. He's out of town uh, in Sacramento testifying before uh, the California Assembly Committee on Local Government uh, in regards to uh, our district's position of support on AB uh, 722, um, and so he couldn't be here today. Um, in his place, uh, I'll be serving as a representative at the UCSB Alcohol and Drug Program Town Hall, which will be at 11 a.m. Uh, on Thursday in Corwin Pavilion. Uh, I have just been informed that Father John is also going to be there, and I bet George will be there too, so uh, yeah. it'll be a fun time. Awesome. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, two weeks ago, I was unfortunately not here last week. I apologize. I was feeling a little bit under the weather. Still not sure if it was really allergies or the flu, beside the point. 
But um, uh, I attended the Partnership for Excellence Conference. Um, Jonathan Abood actually came with me one of the days, and I spoke to several people about um, this Community Services District. I'm really working on making sure that our alumni network um, from Santa Barbara County really uh, understands what's going on here um, and doing some outreach as well as doing some outreach um, for getting some permanent translation services. Uh, I have nothing to report other than that I will be attending that alcohol and other drug uh, meeting and um, uh, would appreciate any direction to keep me from doing something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, I, I remembered what it was that uh, so uh, something we've had occasionally uh, reports from committees that are not agendized um, on during the section uh, so the community engagement committee has uh, still not met um, which is yes. um, uh, we actually received the district two weeks ago a complaint about the community engagement committee um, I have now retained legal counsel in order to verify if I have any liability with relation to us meeting mm. um, uh, the uh, um, I, I received comment from the public that maybe I should not, which is why I, sorry, that I should not meet, which is why I went and obtained that legal representation, uh, and I will be hearing back in the near future about that, um, but I am just reporting that I'm currently not having an attention of meeting until such time I hear back from that. Um, then, uh, however, uh, I have been assigned an intern in order to work on community engagement issues, and we have been working on community engagement issues. Um, so uh, the intern, Stephen, uh, who is in the back there, uh, has been working on uh, contacting uh, some, of, on some of the businesses that have previously not really been able to be contacted. Um, also, uh, we've been working on a strategy for in, uh, working with the uh, Latinx community in the area, as well as um, I, I've been introducing him to the people who <coughs> attend various of the uh, um, uh, dinner events that are run by the churches in the area uh, in the hope of uh, having better community integration on those, on those aspects. Uh, and we continue to work on these things. I'm super excited. Um, That's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. On individual items within the consent agenda, the item will be presented. If there's no board discussion or public comment, the chair will request a motion and we will go straight to a vote. Does anyone have a comment on the con current consent agenda issues? We're looking at item 2.1. Any comment? Public comment? Do you have agendas? Oh, yes, we do. Oh, did you not get a... Item 2.1, approve recommendations from the Policy Committee. A, adopt an uh, amendment to Section 5, decorum of policy entitled Rules of Order. C, attachment A. B, adopt an amendment to Section 3 of the policy entitled External Representation. C, attachment A. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, moving to the board for a motion. Well, we... Should also read item 2.2. They're both the consent agenda is approved as a whole. We're gonna move through from my conversation with Ethan, we're gonna move through individual items okay. in case they're pulled out. Okay, is um, there any discussion on item 2.1? Uh, I move to approve the policy committee's recommendations as stated uh, in uh, attachment A. Awesome. Uh, can Sorry. I have that Google Doc shared with me, please? What's your account? Just nataliejordan99 at gmail.com. I'd like to read back the motion. It'll just be one moment, please. Thank you. Is there any way that in this motion we could actually articulate items A and B within it? Yeah, uh, I rescind my motion. Um, I move to <coughs> adopt um, the policies recommended by the policy committee, uh, an amendment to section five entitled the quorum of the policy entitled rules of order. And- Is this being recorded in the minutes? Sorry, if you're adding me, it'll just be one moment. I All right, I can wait. I'll it. rescind and wait. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'll just check it out here. Ooh, thanks, Will. Awesome. Okay. Here we are. Where are we? Okay. So, can you please um, repeat your motion? Uh, it's, as of now, it is an amendment to Section 5 Decorum of the Policy Committee. Could you please just... Uh, I move to adopt an amendment to Section 5 of the policy entitled Decorum, or I'm sorry, I rescind. Uh, I move to amend Section 5 of the policy entitled Decorum. Uh, I rescind again. I move to amend Section 5 entitled Decorum of the policy entitled Rules of Order to read as stated in attachment A 
and to amend section Slow three. Slow down one second to read as, ty as stated in section A. Yes. And to amend section three of the policy entitled external representation to read as attached in attachment A. Motion to adopt an amendment to section five decorum of policy entitled rules of order to read as stated in attachment A and amend section three of policy to read as stated in attachment A. Is there a second? Second. Second by Director Thurlow. Uh, ready? Awesome. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? So ordered. Director Bertrand is absent today. All right, moving on to item 2.2, approval of the minutes from April 18th, 2017, regular meeting and April 20th of special meeting. As stated before, if there is no public comment or no board discussion, we will be taking a vote. Is there any public comment on these minutes? Awesome. Moving on, is there any discussion from the board? Chair would like to recommend a motion. I have I have a discussion and I'm trying to find the minutes. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Um, Bob, are you trying to find the minutes in the stuff that I printed? I did um, not remember to print the minutes. No, I, th I think I printed them myself. I'm just trying to find it in my package. Absolutely. And there's two it's the minutes of the 18th. Hold on. I'm almost there, I think. Bob, you said these are the minutes of the 18th that you're looking at? I, I'm looking for the one where we talked about, um, it was the issue that Jay brought forward uh, in terms of I made the motion and we talked about um, the going concern. Um, and on what subject specifically? Um, the subject of sanitation, correct? Yeah. Awesome. That was last meeting. Yes, Director. Uh, and I, uh, as of right now, I'll be abstaining on this because I've actually not seen the minutes yet. Absolutely. Thank you. So he, here's what my motion was. It was um, table this item until we are going concerned with adequate tax funding. And so someone asked me to explain that at the meeting and that the going concern is a financial term. That means that if you don't have enough money and you were looking at that's an organization Financially, you, we, we now are really would be considered at this point in time maybe a going concern. We have a going concern issue that we are able to finance. So what I really should have said is table this item until we are not a going concern with adequate tax, with the addition of when, when we have adequate tax funding. So could you please articulate that into a motion? Yeah. <laughs> to amend the concern. minutes. Well, what did you state during the meeting? I stated that. Yeah. And so I didn't know if we would we have to rehear the motion or if we could fix this with a not. Yeah. If well, I, I think we're going to have to, if we wanted to clarify that, we would have to agendize it at a future meeting and that's what take action on it. So yeah. I can bring it back uh, under <laughs> consent calendar uh, right. for next, next, the next regular meeting. Seeing as it's already on the, the minutes are here for approval though. My question is to the board, if the minutes are already here for approval, they're here for approval and edit. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but just he, what, what was written in the minutes is what he said. So, so I'll, I'll he just stated it incorrectly. I'll move yeah. to table the minutes <coughs> until our next board meeting. Okay, there's a motion to table the minutes until the next board minute meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Director Freeman. We are now on discussion. Is there any discussion from the board? Is there any discussion from the public? <coughs> All right. Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? So ordered. 
Director Bertrand is absent this evening. Awesome. This is going to be tabled until next meeting. Moving on to number three, public comment period. At this time, any member of the public may speak on matters within the subject jurisdiction of the Board of Directors that are not on the agenda. The Board will not take action on any item on the agenda except as provided by law. Um, within this context, I'd like to provide some information on the Brown Act and our ability to respond to items. Um, while the Brown Act does not allow discussion or action on items not on the agenda, it does allow members of the legislative body or staff to briefly respond to comments or questions from members of the public, provide a reference to staff or other resources or for factual information or direct staff to place the issue on a future agenda. In addition, even without a comment from the public, the legislative member or staff may ask for information, request to report back, request to place a matter on the agenda for subsequent meeting uh, to subject the body's rules on pr or procedures, ask for a question for clarification, make a brief announcement, or briefly report on any of his or her act own activities. However, caution should be used to avoid any discussion or active action on such items. <coughs> Therefore, we should not be speaking on items that have not been agendized. Are there any members of the, cub the public that would like to speak? The time to speak is a four minute time period um, and will be used with my cell phone. Is would anyone like to come speak? Bacheva Stoll. Absolutely, just one moment, please. Awesome. Could you please state your name for the minutes? Uh, yeah, Bacheva Stoll. Thank you. Awesome. Begin whenever you're ready. Thank you. Um, hey everyone, I just really wanted to introduce myself to all um, directors. I am the external vice president of the local affairs elect. So I will be sworn in in a few weeks. Um, I'm just really excited to work with all of you next year on uh, parking issues and tenant problems. Um, yeah, I just wanted to come and introduce myself. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, is there any comment from the board? Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, very much congratulations. That's great. Yeah. So exciting. Anyone else? Anything? Awesome. Thank you so much, Bachava. Have a great evening. Is there, a, is there any other public comment? Hugh. Awesome. Can you please state your name for the minutes? Yeah, my name is Hugh Lay. You can whenever um, you're ready. Yeah, again, uh, thank you all for having me today. Uh, again, my name is Hugh Lay, and I'm the new president-elect of Associated Students here at UCSB. Uh, and I just would like to introduce myself for me. Uh, and I intend to work in good faith with each and every single one of you going to next year so that we can improve uh, our Atlanta community here and our community here for the students as well. So thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Awesome. Does anyone have any comments? <coughs> thank you very much. Is there any other public comment this evening? Alrighty. All right. We're going to move on. Moving on to section four, discussion and action items. Item 4.1. Receive a presentation from Central Coast Collaborative on homelessness. Review the report homelessness in Santa Barbara County and receive a presentation from Central Coast Collaborative on homelessness. C3H, C attachment B. Awesome. Hey everyone, I'm Luke Barrett. I'm the regional coordinator for C3H. Um, we're a county-wide organization and our main mission is to reduce homelessness and its impacts across the county. Um, so me personally, I facilitate uh, programs in Isla Vista, Gomita, Santa Barbara, and Carpinteria. There's a lengthy report in here, um, as you can see. I'm not going to go over all of it. Um, the, the key points are, there's a thing called the COC. It's the Continuum of Care. Um, the way we get money into Santa Barbara County through the COC is from HUD. Um, federal Department uses about $2 million a year for homeless services through that organization. And as a requirement for getting that money, we have to do a point in time. Whole county has to do it. It's um, definitely a, for lack of a better word, a failed census. It's a baseline. It's not an accurate number. We're all pretty aware of that. Um, because what we do is we mobilize a bunch of volunteers to go out and count people where they're at, unsheltered on the street. Of course, you're going to miss people. It's not possible to cover every square inch. Um, what we do think of it as is a pretty good baseline. Like on January 26th, uh, page 7 in the handout here, you'll see that um, there was 26 people who were found to be homeless in Isla Vista that night. So we know for sure there was at least 26 people that night. That's all you know. We don't know that Isla Vista only has 26 homeless people. There's a pretty big distinction there. Um, 
another comment too is we have total shelters being 15 people. As a lot of you know, there are no homeless shelters now in Vista. There was the warming center over the, over the winter, and that was the shelter population that night. Um, so in the winter, there is a warming center, but the rest of the year, there is no homeless shelters um, here in Nova Vista. So I'm happy to answer questions about the report you have, or to tell you what it's we're doing, I mean, yeah. um, really whatever is helpful for the board and for the public. Awesome, thank you. Okay, sure. um, are there any clarifying questions, Director Geis? This isn't directed at this report um, as it is, but I was wondering, you know, back when Supervisor Farr was on the board, we opened a building over here, the county did, and we housed, I think we took homeless off the street and got them into the shelters, not into the shelters, into, into affordable living. Did that have a great effect of changing the count of the number of homeless and IV? Did it, is that, does that show that that was a real solution to provide housing? Yeah, so I mean, you have the expert on your board, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the big dip you see in that red line, part of that is because of that fair loss. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I would, there's no way to say absolutely for certain, but there's a pretty good chance Red Pesco loss opens, it's not a coincidence, the homeless population drops. Is um, 35 people moved in, Father John? Okay. Uh, yeah, excuse me, say 35 people have moved in, right? Uh, yes, uh, uh, actually 36, 36. Uh, initially. So, I mean, absolutely, it made a huge sense. So, so I guess my question for our Father Hedges is, we, we, we do that, we get the homeless population down, mm -hmm. then does a different homeless population move in and the problem reoccur? In other words, if we build it, uh, did they come? Will more come? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to. I cannot predict for the future, but but I can say categorically that um, uh, that's not been the result. You know, we haven't had people flocking to our uh, cool. door yeah. to wait. Right. So we did take care of them. Uh, it seems like we we did solve part of the long term problem of homeless in Isla Vista with that facility, which. Um, you know, for you and the supervisors, I applaud you for for building that. That was a that was a great yeah. project. It was a, a miraculous project, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We need one more. Yes. Well, <laughs> Galita will will have uh, 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 Hollister lofts. That's, that's amazing. The, that's the next one. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Does I anyone have any other comments? Can Director I follow? Thurlow? Up? Yeah. Um, What's your sense of the transiency within the county? And the transiency is not really a good word, um, but would you predict that if there's a major crackdown on homelessness in the city of Santa Barbara, that it would have an impact on Isla Vista? It's a really good question. Um, I think you're referencing the current crackdown in Santa Barbara. Uh, well. Um, I don't want to characterize <laughs> what we're doing. Do you think that you could please describe what you mean by crackdown? Yeah, sorry. So um, Santa Barbara City has recently made some changes. They passed an RV ordinance as one example. Um, oversized vehicles are no longer allowed to park on city streets in Santa Barbara, which 100 ballpark people live in mm -hmm. RVs in Santa Barbara. So that forced them to either move or get ticketed in tow. Um, so if you're thinking, I live in Santa Barbara, what are my options? Carpenter Villa, Govita, Isla Vista, if you still work and want to be around Santa Barbara, Govita has an oversized vehicle ordinance as well. So that leaves Isla Vista. Um, Carpenter Villa, they don't have an ordinance per se, but they're really strict about parking laws. So there could be. Um, I haven't seen anything personally yet. Um, doesn't mean there couldn't be. The other big crackdown is the State Street um, policing. So based mostly on business owner concerns um, and a lot of complaints to the city they've actually put two foot patrol officers on State Street who do nothing but walk Lower State Street all day long. It's an effort to kind of criminalize homelessness, honestly. There's nothing they can really do. You can't arrest people for being homeless on State Street, but you certainly can bother them and try to move them along. Um, I don't think that would affect other this. I think it would affect probably the east side of Santa Barbara and other neighborhoods within walking distance, but yeah. I can't say for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Human. Um, so actually, Isla Vista does have an oversized parking ordinance. It was just put in place last year. Oh, wow. Um, okay. uh, and we've got the signs up now for it. Um, the, uh, and, and just to follow up with George's question, I think we're, there is an election coming up in Santa Barbara, and some people are concerned that the crackdown might increase. And so I think that's where it's, um, 
thought processes on what might happen if they, they go much further. Awesome. Um, much further as in, oh, increasing the yes uh, the law person. enforcement aspect. I mean, I can only speak from my experience. Um, what I've seen in Santa Barbara is basically game of whack-a-mole. It's if you crack down the state street really, really hard, Milpa's population grows a little bit, and vice versa. Um, there's not enough police to be everywhere at all times, and it's not illegal to be homeless, and it's not illegal to live in a car, and it's not illegal to do a lot of these things. The challenge is for a lot of people, where can you go and be left alone? So that's the struggle, and I think it moves around the city a lot, but I haven't seen a lot of people really saying, I'm gonna go live in Isla Vista and be homeless because I'm tired of Santa Barbara. In my experience, I haven't seen that much, but there's people in the room that know a lot more than I do about that. May I ask, is it to be left alone, or are these people looking for secure housing in places like Piscadero um, Lofts? It's not a one-size-fits-all answer. Uh, these are individuals, these are persons, not a population. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are there for a full range of, uh, of reasons. Uh, they've had a crackdown recently in Bakersfield also. Uh, we haven't seen an influx of folks from Bakersfield here. Uh, they've had it, it crackdowns in a number of cities. And um, uh, we had a, a large percentage of those surveyed who had lived in Santa Barbara County since uh, their childhood. So uh, a lot of these are our people. They are our neighbors, whether they're houseless or not. Thank you. And. Um, in addition, absolutely, I was, I did experience homelessness for about six months last year, and I absolutely understand a lot of the concerns that people raise, and also the security concerns of this population. Yeah, so optimistic thing I think we see in Isla Vista, though, is it is a relatively stable group. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. not this free and flowing transient population all day long. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So we really can get to know people and help them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Mm -hmm. um, in the past year, we've got just off the top of my head, four people, um, a permanent place to live, who are almost out of this, and they're now living somewhere permanent, which is great. Um, we have a, a group of UCSB students who do outreach for us, and we, um, we and C3H, facilitates that every week. Um, we also do little stipend programs here and there, so we got some money for um, job development for people who are homeless in IV. So we can actually give little cash stipends for a few people to do just kind of odd job stuff. Um, so we're working with local partners and the county supervisors to figure out what we can do here in IV um, and really help people here. We spend about like four to five hours a week just here and out of this that we're in. Thank you. Okay. Just to Objection quickly to follow up on that, it would be wonderful if you could work with our community engagement committee when it gets up and running to coordinate um, your projects. With, with what we're what we're trying to achieve, I think it would be great um, to sort of add your help to what to our fledgling operation here. That seems like a great fit. I'd be happy mm -hmm. to. And thank we have you. a lot of thank thank community you. leaders who are students, but just do amazing work. And I'd like great. to connect them thank as you. well. That's thank awesome. You. Thank you very much. Are there any other clarifying questions? Thank you very much. Is there any public comment? Yeah, I, I, I have um, I read the report. A report? Yeah, I read, I read this. Uh, oh, a report or a comment directly on this Well, I, well I read it and I actually got to say that we got to we got to uh, prepare for the future. I mean, come on now. This is the Isla Vista. And um, I, I looked at the report and it's very unrealistic to the, the truth. And if there's homelessness that's happening where, you know, I see maybe upwards to maybe a thousand people are homeless in Santa Barbara City County, and if they don't have any resources, and this is University of California, Santa Barbara right up the street, and uh, that's supposed to be an uh, institute of innovation. They can't innovate a way in which to uh, create um, jobs and shelter for the homeless, and we're not doing a service to the community. Santa Barbara as a whole. So, you know, why push them away? Why, why not educate re and repopulate? You know, jobs and training. You know, the homeless are very, I, I know them actually, personally, very knowledgeable people. And they can actually teach the population how to live and sustain their community a little bit better. Um, so <clears throat> I think advocacy means that sometimes we have to um, look at the, some of the figures that we've uh, developed and we, we've looked at and we have to say, well, well, you know, these are persons. I think um, um, Father Hedges, 
Is that that? It's just, these aren't numbers. These are, these are persons, these are individuals. And um, there are ways in which we can uh, work with the city, the county, UCSB, and you, use all these resources as far as intelligence, in, intelligence uh, to really uh, help this uh, problem not be um, a problem and something uh, for the nation itself to start to recognize. So a lot of the homeless people are actually mm -hmm. veterans. They serve this country. You know, some of them are actually UCSB students that just had a bad quarter. You know, we got to really start looking at what we're trying to build as a city, and, and, and it's all about resources and the availability of resources, you know. And then that when that happens, when people start seeing the availability of resources as far as a city, or we're working, we become a, a model for the world then. Of course we have, to, we have to deal with the homeless population. You know, housing, jobs, resources, that's the answer to that. You know, so alloc more allocation towards that end. You know, resources, and, and I believe me, I see the mountains of Goleta, and I see nothing growing there. We got a lot of work to do. We can feed this whole nation. We could house people, bring them off the streets, and we can send them out to the world. And they'll be like, wow, this is what I learned in Isla Vista. You know, send them to Syria. Send them to Sudan. All over the world, Ethiopia, Rome. Emissaries. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what I remember of Isla Vista. Oh, I always like nostalgic about that and, and run into a lot of guys that form Kikos and come back and just kick it back with you and you know, have a coffee with you a little bit. Some of the lot of innovation that came out of this, 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 this area. And the um, thing about it is like, um, it was a community. And I think sustainability of that community is what we really have to really focus on. And I, I congratulate you all on what y'all are doing today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other public comment? Thank you. We're going to head back to the board. Is there any action that we would like to take on this item? I don't believe so. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you Thank very, you. very Thank much. We're going to go back out to public, public comment one more time before moving on. Is there any other public comment? Yes, absolutely. Jeff Everhart. Thank you. And I write as Jeff Bard and uh, blog as Tassa Amza Anana. For legal reasons, I have to become known by that for Facebook terms of service reasons. And uh, I am actually moving out of an advocacy role more into a journalistic role of late. But um, uh, I wasn't really planning to comment, but I really feel a uh, burning need just to uh, recognize. Uh, contributions to the Isla Vista community, and particularly the homeless, but not just the homeless, of uh, Reverend Doug Miller. Um, at a time when a lot of the resources were focused in the uh, city of Santa Barbara, formed uh, Project HEAL, which stands for Health, Empowerment, and Love, which was focusing on the Goleta and Isla Vista community and the topic of uh, health, hygiene, and cleanliness came up in a way that uh, had often been neglected in other areas. And this dovetailed perfectly because I had taken up the cause of um, applying a little bit of background I had in uh, AIDS advocacy to the homeless community. And I discovered that infectious tuberculosis and influenza were a big problem in the jails and homeless shelters and kind of uh, began a period of time where I was kind of a Don Quixote, you know, tilting against windmills, but apparently it had uh, some impact because when influenza swept through San Luis Obispo and Ventura, it skipped over our county. We didn't even hear about it. Somebody died up in the jail in Slow. They had to shut down the little jail in Ventura. They had to suspend court operations and I had grilled you know, Commander Patterson. And I, I don't know if there was causal, but it was, it was synchronicity. And then there was the big tuberculosis epidemic, Ground Zero, Los Angeles Rescue Mission. And so Doug Miller, at that point in time, him and Jeff Schaefer had my back and really stood up for me when, I, when my brand of advocacy was on. And Miller uh, went on to spearhead the shower trucks, which are now in operation on Fridays and Mondays. So the homeless can go and get showers 
and um, it's just been uh, a fantastic program. And uh, he's done so much more, it'd be impossible <coughs> in impromptu four minutes to fully acknowledge what Reverend Miller's done for our community. So I, I really wanted to make sure to acknowledge that. And uh, he has had to retire for health reasons. So. Very well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. We're going to be moving on to considering taking a position on Measure O. Measure o. Discuss Measure O, a local ballot measure placed on the ballot by the Isla Vista Recreation and Park District and consider taking a position on support, Director Freeman. Um, so as when this came up, uh, I came up last time, um, I have funded now about half of the Measure O campaign. I spoke with various people. I received a couple comments that I should recuse myself. Um, I also have now spoken with my new legal counsel and on uh, advice from legal counsel, I am recusing myself. So Thank I you very much. Can we please have the minutes reflect that Director Freeman is leaving at 6.36 p.m.? Right Thank you very much. Um, Director Freeman is also outside. I'd like to also make it clear that that actually changes our number of quorum. Or recu recusing yourself, to my knowledge, would also remove you from the total amount of votes that are currently in the room as an absence would, um, which changes our quorum. I'd like to take note of that. Um, I'd like to ask if the board has any clarifying questions. Uh, clarifying questions on that. Clarifying questions oh. or discussion on this specific item, item 4.2. Oh, on item 4.2. Well, yeah. I'd I think it'd be great to give a little bit of background. I'd be happy to Absolutely. do that on what Measure O is. So um, the Isla Vista Recreation and Park District uh, is a special district in town that's been maintaining uh, the parks in Isla Vista since 1972. Um, this is straight from the Measure O website. Uh, their mission is and always has been to improve and protect the quality of life through park stewardship, community engagement, and recreation and cultural programming. Um, the tax ballot measure uh, they are asking for or uh, asking the voters to approve requires uh, a two-thirds majority vote uh, of the voters. Um, it's a mail-in ballot only election um, and the tax would raise uh, $250,000 a year to pay for um, uh, a number of different things. Um, it would just go straight, I believe, into, or no, it would go into a special tax fund um, and there are a number of things they could spend it on. Um, it won't increase uh, taxes for Isla Vista residents or property owners, uh, or for the vast majority of them, that is, uh, because of the fact that uh, this tax was placed on the ballot as a response to a bond that just sunsetted uh, for them, uh, that a bond that was just recently finished being paid off by property owners. Uh, so the tax being a bedroom tax uh, that property owners would pay on their uh, property tax bill would be for $22 per bedroom uh, per year, or not 22, I think it's 27 something. Mm -hmm. um, and so, oh yeah, George has it, 28.75. Um, so essentially um, this, this revenue uh, would go for a number of things. Some of the requests that the district has gotten uh, for things that they would like to put in place are improved lighting in the parks, uh, a skate park, fitness equipment for adults, um, recycled water infrastructure, a dog park, uh, art and cultural programming, barbecue areas. Um, there's a pretty long list. Um, down for the and, taker. Oh yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, and maybe I should have clarified to the minute taker too. Um, I, I think action minutes are definitely the best um, in terms of like, we can take minutes of like what motions were made. We don't necessarily have to take a Let's full record of that. There's already been so just please That's continue fine. Okay, talking continue. just slowly. Thank you. So um, I guess the main point that I wanted to make is that we as a board are still in our very infantile stages. We as a district are in that place. Um, and I think it sends a powerful message uh, for us to be able to uh, endorse a ballot measure being put on the ballot by another special district in town. Uh, I think it really sets us off on the right foot in terms of relations. Um, and I'd love to hear what everyone else has to say. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Is there any other comment from the board before we go out to the public? I just, Director you know, Geis. just just for perspective, it is kind of like competition against us because we're competing for the same tax dollars eventually. I mean, I'm, I'm a longtime supporter of Ivy Rec and Park, and I'm going to support this. Uh, I'm going to support us to support Measure O, mm -hmm. but. When you look at the bigger tax picture, you know, I love it when we put our tax out there, 
they always say, well, we pay more than anybody else. Well, they pay more than anybody else because they, they pay for Ivy Rec and Park and a lot of other areas don't pay for recreation and park services. But they do get a good break on their utility rate because some of their property taxes are going to pay uh, sanitary district charges. So it's kind of a mixed bag, but I just want to say it does create competition when we take our ballot measure back there. And I don't know if they supported us or supported the district actively, but I don't hold that against them. I'm still going to support IV Rec and Park because they've been doing great work since 1972. And I've been part of auditing that district for a long time, and they do a lot with a little bit of money. <laughs> And so that's just my, my yeah. comment on yeah. it. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak before we go out to the public? Thank you so much. We're going to be going out for public comment. Is there any public comment on this discussion item? Thank you very much. We're going to be going back to the board. So I'll move that we um, pass a resolution uh, in support of Measure O. We don't actually have a uh, composed resolution, though at this moment to my knowledge. So it would just be so uh, a uh, a support of. Okay. Is that okay with you? Sure. Is and I second? second that. Is there a second? Heartily. Awesome. Second die director. Hedges? Awesome. Do, just a question. Do we want to send out a formal letter of support um, to the district? Uh, I'll accept that as a friendly amendment that we uh, not only send out a letter to the district but also make it available to the news media. All right. As of now, I have motion to support it. Motion to support measure O. Do you think that we could add the addition, please? Of um, who would we like to direct to do so? Uh, let's have the board president do that. Uh, mo move to support measure O and direct the board president to send out a formal letter of support. And there's a second by Hedges. Is that friendly? It's friendly to the second. Awesome. Thank you. We're going to be going out to public comment one more time before we take a vote. Thank you. Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? So ordered. Director Bertrand is absent. Director Freeman is outside and has recused himself from this conversation. Could someone please go retrieve him? Whoever's nearest. Uh, someone's going to grab him. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. We're going to be moving on to item 4.3. Consider adopting a district seal and general design guidelines. Consider adopting a district seal and primary alternate and script logos. See attachment C. A. Adopt the district seal and graphic logos as pictured in attachment C and direct the secretary of the board to keep custody of the, the deal. B. Direct the secretary to develop a set of design guidelines for uses of the district graphic logos and district documents. Would anyone like to speak on this discussion item? Yes, I can introduce it just to begin with. Thank so, you. one of the things um, that the secretary is tasked by law with doing is keeping custody of the district steel, seal, is what it is called. Um, and so, uh, the, what I do, what I like to do before I fall asleep at night, uh, is fiddle around on uh, Adobe Illustrator uh, and do graphic design. Uh, and I figured. Uh, why not uh, make a district seal? Um, so in that process, um, I have made a draft district seal. Uh, I just wanted to see what everyone thought of it, uh, and if they liked it and would consider uh, adopting it as the district seal. Um, I will say that um, it will, I think it will add a nice touch uh, in terms of uh, our legit legitimacy uh, to folks who maybe don't know all about us. Um, I think it looks, uh, governmental enough, um, but also uh, trendy and youthful enough. Uh, it's largely based off of the design uh, that I have back here that we've been using. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of comments from folks saying that they liked it. So uh, I'd love to hear any feedback uh, on what folks think of it. Um, I know this is not something that anyone tasked me with doing, um, but I figured, well, what the hell, why not? So. Awesome, thank you so much. Is there any comment from the board, Director Hedges? I, I would just like to say that it looks trendy and uh, Very useful. Trendy. <laughs> and, uh, and in addition, it looks traditional. Uh huh. I love it. It is a good balance. Awesome, thank I you. I was impressed. Dr. Thank Freeman. You. I love it, and everyone I showed it to yesterday loved it. Um, I have a question about the, the sheet of paper, the attachment. Um, so there's also, to the right of the district seal, you have four district seals. At first I thought it was just to show it against different background colors, but then I realized two of them were the same. 
is this an alternative usage that we would have? I did get feedback from somebody that it was repetitive, and which I also agreed with. Oh, um, no, this was just to show it against different backgrounds. It was, okay. It was just, when two of them were the same, I, was, I got a little confused. Yeah, well, maybe yeah I, think, I think I started it. running it out of colors. Okay. And um, I think this the, is beautiful. the main colors, I think, are the orange, the yellow, the blue, and the green. Yeah. Uh, and with the, with the orange and the blue being the primary colors. Yeah. I do have um, uh, feedback. I don't know if this is so the, the next item. You have uh, district script, and you have the um, different colors. I wasn't certain was the idea there to provide you know, feedback on colors for that, or you can provide me with any feedback you okay. want. Um, um, I mean, I would yeah. I would prefer to not see uh, a logo or a script whose only two colors are gold and blue because that connects it very extremely with the university. Um, both it's both the University of California's colors as well as uh, you know, the University of California Santa Barbara's primary colors. Um, I'm perfectly fine. I know orange is one of the secondary colors at UC. I'm perfectly fine with that. Just as long as it doesn't make it seem like a department of UCSB or something by using just gold or blue. Um, and then uh, the abbreviated script. Um, I, there's something about the, 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 it's both the kerning between the, the V and the C as well as the vertical spacing that is like if you, if you draw a line that the, the, the optical kerning on the vertical, that's kerning with the optical alignment on the top of the C. I don't know, there's something weird about it and so I, I, I'm not convinced on the bottom left thing yet. But. I'll, I'll, I'll bring, how about I bring everything that's not the seal back? Yeah, uh, seal though is awesome. Seal. Yeah. Seal. I'm just so impressed. That I think the seal is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Is there any other comment, Dr. Geis? The, the tree reminds me of the tree on the sign when you come into IB. Yeah. Does, anybody, does anybody own that that design that's on that sign? Is that, or is that just... Is it the same... Is it, the same, no? is it the same tree as Ivy Reckon Park? Does I don't there? remember where I outlined this tree from, but I can tell you that the way that I do the design is that I trace along it, so there's no way that it would actually be exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, I got it. I, yeah. I like that there's a tree like mm -hmm. that, that it, yeah. Bra it yeah, yeah, brands yeah, yeah. Isla Vista it's and it consistent. ties into the brand. Yeah. I just didn't know if anybody owned that branding. Yeah, I don't believe so. Thank you. Is there any other comment from the board before we go to the public, Director Freeman? Um, the, so the, the Isla Vista tree, I believe, is also the logo with the Isla Vista Community Council. Um, it was an actual physical tree that, as the bluff receded, fell into the ocean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there was a rock that was put, yeah, Jonathan's actually got a photo of it. Uh, so, there it is. So even if we there base it something off of, I mean, it, is, it is based on a real thing that was the tree that we all adored okay. before I was even born, so I didn't adore it. <laughs> um, but then there was, a, there was a, a rock, I think, put in its place, and then the rock fell into the ocean. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> awesome. Is there any other comment before you move to public comment? Thank you. We're moving on to public comment. Yes. Well, actually, can you please state your name for the? Right here. Can you state your name for the minutes, please? Oh yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Francis, and thank you, Francis. Uh, this man here is an art, fine artist, Eric Hayes, and he actually made this type of logo, and it's it's. Uh, located in the Ivy Food Bank, and you said you don't know where the, you got the idea for the tree logo, but at the UCSB Food Bank, not the Ivy Food Bank, the UCSB Food Bank, and he did a mural painting, and I saw the process of that myself, and I don't know if it's up there right now or not, but it reflected on the May 23rd shootings, and other themes that are really important to society and especially United States society and our you know personal lives and everything here. So this um, logo reminds me exactly of that and I don't know I've seen it before there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Oh yes. Um, very, I, I just guess very quickly. I do support, I, I love the design. I do love the design. I'm just going over here for. Yeah, of uh, course. Uh, Thank you. Um, but what I would say, and I did say this to Director Freeman, what I would tr try to explore is like maybe business cards for you guys because when I do it's go great, out, yeah. Um, like people sort of like look at me like IV, IVCSD, you know, they're not like, like what is it, what is that, like oh, who, who is on it, like do you have a business card, do, who do you work for, um, and when I don't have, you know, the ability to give somebody a business card that kind of, mm -hmm. I, I don't like that, that, that makes me uneasy, so like, I, again, I, I fully support like the sale, it's wonderful, but like explore as well like um, other sort of like logos or things that you, like tangible things that you can hand out uh, to the public. 
um, that's really just it. Thank you so much. Just because that's on agenda, if anyone would like to add that in the future, to adding that to our agenda at the end, that would be great. Thank you. Maybe I should. Yes, I am fine. Our staircase, for record. I'll go ahead and comment on that. It is true. Everything was said was true. And one of the reasons why I designed that specifically is like we can't. Look, we're not going to populate um, either list of without recognizing what happened on May twenty third, where we went wrong as a society, as a university, as people. Well, how did we get right as a community? That's what we got to go back to. How did we get right as a community? So yeah, that's what inspired the drawing. So I'm so proud to be acknowledged as Fine Arms Derricase. And also designed Obama 2012 and a lot of different other things. But I did that out of the kindness of my heart because I needed a community. That's what we need, really need. That's what we're trying to build here, right, is a community. You know? It's not about like, you know, of course, yeah, branding that, yeah, billions of dollars are probably owed, but who cares, right? You know, if I had to take time and really spoke to Elliot at that time, I ran into my IV, you know, I brought it to the university's attention, but I was not graduated as a black studies major yet still as a student. But I didn't have a community. Nobody was listening. Nobody was listening. So now we have a community that's listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what's important. We have at least a community that's listening. So now we can develop. Yeah, it's true. You know, yeah, it reminds me a lot of that. And you know, I think it's beautiful. It's, it's what we're supposed to do. Like, Disney did the same thing. We're supposed to, like, build innovation here, man. We're supposed to bring things together. And, you know, yeah, of course. That's what it's all about. Yes, and I'm very proud to have that adopted. You know what I'm saying? Because that's exactly what this is about. Mm. Now, the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The general logo is okay, good. Now, the, the branding around that or whatever. I think that's up to the council to decide which colors are better. Thank right? you. Thank you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah, of course, we have to we have to take take that, and we have to um, we have to grow from there. You know, as a community, and that's what that is. You know, of course, we have artisans here, we have engineers here. That's what all of this is about, man. This is an actual living. We want to make this a living town, a living community. You know, we want to start to build a legacy for the world. We want to start to restructure this from here. You know, we're not really worried about the rest of the United States right now. We're just in turmoil right now. They ain't got no community. There's no leadership. There's no one at the top. So we got to start at the ground level. We got to say, yeah, okay, we're trying to build a community here. That's what our focus is, to build a community. With those two things that build a community, of course we want to adopt that. Of course we want to bring that in. And we want to be celebratory of the students that lost their lives by bringing the community together. You know, and that's what we want to bring strength. We want to bring strength and recognition so that the world says, okay, that's what we did. That's how we came. That's actually what started it all. To me, the world went from fall to now we got to start back since May, be three years, May 23rd. So we got to show the world that this world, we, we, we started over, we planted a seed, and we began to grow. And there was a tree, and there was a fruit that was bound a thousandfold. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Awesome. We're going to be moving back. Is there any action that we would like to take on this item? I'll move that we um, adopt the district seal. Um, Sir? And direct the secretary to develop a um, There's going to be a motion, and then it'll go back to the public comment one more time before we actually take the vote. Thank you. So I move that we adopt the uh, district seal the understanding that the um, script will be brought back for further discussion at the next board meeting and direct the secretary to develop a set of design. You know, I'm I, I actually now with, uh, I don't want to direct the secretary to develop a set of guidelines. Uh, you can just, just move to adopt the seal. The seal is the seal. Okay. Yeah. You'd like to move to adopt the seal? Yeah. Is there a second? Second. There is has been a second by Director Hedges. We're going to be going back to the public, uh, back to public comment. I don't know. You might want to maybe wait a week or something before you know passing it. Possibly. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeremy Ruck. Um, I uh, uh, feel that um, might be. Uh, a good idea for the board to consider um, recognition of 
the design's origination um, and basically listening to the community uh, in terms of, um, I guess that's, that's more of a comment, not necessarily directed at the logo, but I was originally going to make a comment after this gentleman and didn't hear that there was a time to do that, so I just wondered, I was just wondering. So in what capacity do you believe that there should be some recognition like of Spencer as a graphic designer? Um, well, I think that's probably where the recognition would go at this uh, current point, but I was talking more about uh, where the, also considering um, the origin of where this design was, what this design was based off of, and if there, if it was necessary to give some consideration to people who may have developed that design as well. Do you mean like, like, like my, you said, like you were tracing something, and like a, a photo of a tree? Oh, was the photo? You were tracing a photo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Okay. Back to the. Is there any other public comment? We're going to move back to the board. Um, yeah. There's further public comment. Can you please just state your name for the minutes one more time, please? Okay. Uh, my name is Frances and Dil Nessa and I'm just tired of people like myself or some other people that I know and love. We work hard in our daily lives year after year, struggling to survive, developing as people personally, and we get our own ideas and characteristics stolen, and we don't get to develop other ways, like economically wealthy, other things like that, because we have to stress out about other um, whatever, things like this. Like, he's gonna get credit for being a graphic designer, you suggested, and he said, he didn't remember where he got the idea for that tree. He didn't say he traced it off of a tree or he got the idea from a tree. He said he didn't remember where he got the idea. And I'm gonna look crazy trying to accuse somebody I've never even seen before of something like this. And I don't know why you got me on camera. Is that gonna be used for something? Um, to be clear, I want to. I would like to clarify an item. Um, in item 1.2, we have announced that the meeting was being recorded. If you'd like to be off camera, you're welcome to take your seat again, because that's actually outside of the purview of the camera. But your voice still will be recorded. I'd like to make that clear. OK, what about when I was standing in the audience and the camera was turned on me? Does that count? Um, would you like to clarify the angle of the camera, please? Um, I am not recording at the direction of the board, and I have retained legal counsel to determine whether I should send a cease and desist about a jet at 1.2 in the future. Um, I am allowed to record the meeting, um, and uh, I mean, if you would like to tell me to not push you, I will, I'll, I'll, even standing there, I'll edit you out. I don't care. Okay. I'll actually put a black bar over you. Um, but this is a public meeting, and uh, everyone here is supposed to be, like, there are people who aren't able to be at this meeting today who at some point in the future would like to be able to see your comments. Huh. And to be clear, I'd like to make sure that we're still staying on topic with item 4.3, considering the adoption of a district steel and den general design guidelines. Do you have a comment on this um, agenda item specifically? Okay. Yeah, at least it doesn't need to be passed right away today like that. Because is this the first time it's been presented? Was it presented last time you met, or is it not? Because I'm sorry, I didn't get to look over the agenda, and I apologize. I didn't mean to speak today, but I'm... Absolutely. I, I completely understand. Would you like to speak on this, um, Director Brandt? Is about the first time so about the design, so. I'd like to speak, then. I'll speak. Just uh, one moment, please. Absolutely. We're only going to allow one person speaking at a time, and Director Grant's going to answer her comments before we move on. Thank you. So this design origi originated uh, last year when I was working um, with Jonathan Abood uh, and another member of the public uh, named Brian on a podcast uh, that never quite materialized. Um, that's where this design comes from, um, that's where the basis of that, which then became this, came from, um, and I designed it in a program called Adobe Illustrator, which is just a graphic design program, um, and in terms of what the inspiration is, um, many of these houses uh, are right outside of my house, and I particularly like walking down the street and looking at them, um, and I've always thought that they made a nice backdrop. Um, so. I, I had no idea um, that uh, Derek made something that is vaguely similar, um, but it was certainly not anything that I've seen or not my intention to steal anything. 
Have you ever been to the AS Food Bank? Uh, no, I've not. Okay. Has Jonathan a bar ever you. been to? M will food? you mind wa waiting one moment, please? Do you mind stating your name for the yes, minutes, please? My name is Derek Hayes. Let me, let's get this straight. Derek Hayes, okay? Let's get it straight. Yes, that's my design. Period. No, it's not. Oh, wait. Excuse I designed me. it for one thing. Listen, to unify everybody. You know, when I walked away, I saw other shoes in a car at night. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what y'all been doing, but here it is. Here's the truth. Listen, if you want a community, we got to start by building it on something called truth. I'm not going to let my, uh, I'm not going to, uh, truth. Okay. Yes, it's been the AS Food Bank. It's been in there quite some time. Okay, and it was inspired by a, a need to build a real community. I remember walking around here as a UCSD student, never thought I was homeless, and I was a UCSD student, how they treated me, and how everything I said to prevent those shootings was not even listened to. When I brought Elliot to their attention, they did not listen to it. You see, that's why we're trying to build a city, brothers. Now come on, yes, Derek's idea. Yeah, Derek warned everybody, but how did Derek rehabilitate himself? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. It was good people that had good resources, and the good people that had good resources decided, that, hey, we have to build a community. And they said, we gotta recognize what really happened, Derek, the way you saw it. Uh, two yen again, the S Food Bank, I believe, UCSB, yes, that's Derek's stuff. I didn't put my name on it, I didn't sign it, come on. It's Derek's ideas. It's been that way for quite some time. I mean, UCSB gaucho. A lot of my stuff on the campus has been adopted. I ain't said nothing about it. Now, what I'm trying to do is build a community, build resources, build jobs. You don't think I can train people to draw? Come on. I'm training a lot of artists here. What we got to do is we got to get it together. Now, if I said that's cool, I like it, but no, it, I think it needs to uh, uh, include a little bit more about May 23rd. I'm sorry. Thank you. The truth. Yes. Okay, we're not going to sugarcoat it no more. We're going to keep it real, and then we're going to build a real community because people come in here, you know what they're going to say? I could have the village today. They got a community there. They sticking together there. They're not sugarcoating it. They're not putting it, uh, putting it under rug even. They're going ahead with it through love, through spirit, and through community. Remember, keep it strong, or we can, we all have, we are all family here. That's Derek Hayes. I'm the one that said that. Derek Hayes. You remember me posing in front of IB Deli Mart, looking through the window. I saved all those 200 students in a Tropicana Garden, but I, I, was, I felt guilt from not going ahead and putting that trash through that window when I seen L.A. Rogers other individuals in that garden at night. You understand what I'm saying? You got to take the wins with the losses, but I'm going to tell you something. I, the community that came to get me out of the depths of that misery is the reason why I'm here standing here today healthy. Because they said, you know what, Derek, you're an artist, bro. Put it all together for us. Help us grow. All right, I'll leave you know. Thank you very much. Come on, here. Sure. Thank you. I'd really like to remind everyone that we still are in item 4.3 considering adopting a district deal and general design guidelines. We will not be accepting comments that move, for, move beyond um, that discussion item. Thank you very much for your comments, sir. Uh, regarding this deal, um, like I said, I am actually moving out of an advocacy okay. role more toward a journalistic and actually even a historiography role. And I'm trying to uh, remain distant and cut back on my comments. But um, there are certain issues, such as the slander of libel question, that do touch upon my emerging role as a journalist. And this particular um, agenda item brings up, I just wanted to um, bring to the board's attention um, that there's more than meets the eye about intellectual property disputes. And one thing, uh, I had a, a a, a, a really just crazy um, intellectual property dispute that came up and I sought help from various people in authority and although I did get one expression of some sympathy by and large I've been faced with a brick wall of disconcern in which I was actually demonized and I had to endure the, um, over this intellectual property claim an absolutely false, spurious police report uh, by someone who had um, become assaulted and had committed um, arguably at least a civil breach, if not a theft, of a tape that didn't belong to them. 
and I had three, you know, deputies so marching kind of with Glock knives over an intellectual property yeah, claim. Chair. So I would urge you, um, and there is a chair, I would urge you um, to take seriously an intellectual property dispute because right now, uh, you know, I had a good part of my day ruined by the a spiraling series of misunderstandings around the, an intellectual property dispute not terribly unlike the one that the board should now be aware of. And, and I would like to concur if there's been a request from the public for, uh, about noticing this motion. We have noticed the meeting yeah. and we've actually noticed this motion Well, I'm just making publicly. my comment that it's apparent that there's a dispute that wasn't anticipated. So I, I'm urging on this agenda item, I'm just telling you right now, I have a bunch of people that are acting like my enemies rather than my friends over a spiraling intellectual property dispute and there's more than I'm going to go into but I'm just here at this agenda point urging you if, if ignore this at your own peril but your reputation is at stake and even if it's a misunderstanding I'm right now disgusted by the emotions and the way people are behaving around intellectual property so I'm urging you to think very long and hard before you just ignore multiple comments from the public and proceed on this agenda item. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. Awesome. We're, is there any other public bo comment before we move back to the board? <coughs> Thank you. We'll be moving back to the board. There is a motion on the floor currently. The motion is, uh, where are we in the motion? I'm sorry. Do you mind pointing me in the direction? Uh, move to adopt the district's deal with the understanding that the script will be brought back for further dis further discussion at the next board meeting. Second by Director Hedges. Uh, is there any discussion on this motion? Director Hedges. Um, bearing in mind that uh, both the motion and the second um, uh, preceded the uh, the controversial and um, uh, I would propose not a motion but a, a, an alternative way of looking at this for both the public if I may with the chair for just a moment absolutely um, what we have here is something that um, like all trees grew from from soil it grew from the soil of, of this community. Um, and it is a vision that we see on, on here. It's a vision that we see over in the food bank. Both of them are visions of something that grew from the soil of this community. And we all kind of see it in our hearts, whether we um, can put it down with with a, an artful program or whether we can draw it with pen and ink. Either way, it is a vision that we all see. Um, for my, forgive my uh, sort of Pollyanna kind of way of looking at this, but I, I would hope that we can see this as something that we all saw. And um, such visions really shouldn't be copywritten. And, um, you know, if that, if that can be found among us here, then, you know, I, I would continue with my second. If it can't, I'd have to withdraw it. In what capacity um, do you feel that it needs to be copyrighted? I, 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 I'm, I'm saying that there's kind of a sense that, you know, we are um, holding on to it, in, in a sense. Um, and um, uh, that doesn't build the kind of community that I think the tree itself envisions. Um, you know, that is a vision of, of, of a community growing here. Uh, and I think Derek would give up his copyright for that vision. And I think Spencer would give up his copyright for that vision. I, his, I don't plan on seeking copyright. And, and that's my sense about it. Uh, and I, I think that this, if anything, is a vision of the people of Isla Vista. Uh, not, not even, uh, uh, 
you know, and I, it, it, is, it is over there on the wall at the university. I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it is, and I'm sure it, it, it's the same vision. So um, how about if I would, let me withdraw my motion um, and ask the board to table this matter. Let's all yeah. take a look at the, at the mural at the AS Food Bank and, um, and then bring this back to the, bo to the board. So you're in your motion? Yes. Absolutely. We're going to be moving on. I'd like to also make clear that um, I will be reaching out to the executive director of the Associated Students to pull the um, contract and copyright information on the images. Uh, Associated Students maintains a bank of um, all of our, uh, of each of our different uh, images that have been processed by multiple different artists over time. Um, so I will definitely be peeling through those contracts to make sure that acknowledgement has been recognized. All right, um, moving on. We'll be moving on to item 4.4. Consider a request for proposals. RFP for legal services, discuss the necessity of legal services for the district, ideas for attaining legal representation, and also priorities for RFP, including but not limited to the scope of work, compensation, and timetable. See attachment D. A. Direct the formation committee to review the sample request for proposals on legal services and return to the board with a draft request for proposals. Uh, Director Freeman. I think this perfectly fits in line with what the formation committee was originally designed to do, which was to look into legal services, accounting, and uh, liability. I think this is a, I mean, I, I guess this came, I mean, actually, I'm not even entirely certain why this issue came to here. Who submitted the? I submitted I can. I can You're on the issue committee. Like, so, okay. Yeah, so well, the re one of the reasons I wanted to submit it uh, is because, um, so first of all, if, you, if you'll see um, attachment D, uh, there's a sample request for proposals uh, that was floated by the Livermore Area Recreation and Park District. I think in the past uh, couple of weeks it's become apparent that uh, we should retain some sort of legal services uh, or legal counsel. Um, and so uh, what I did was I went onto the California Special Districts Association website and I found this document um, that is a request for proposals. Um, it contains, of course, the scope of work uh, that would be fulfilled by the proposer, uh, the timing uh, and requirements for the proposals and the evaluations. Um, it contains the process by which those uh, proposals will be evaluated um, and some information uh, about what the contract would look like uh, in the future. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring it before everybody um, is because um, there's also an item on the formation committee agenda, uh, or there will be, uh, at least it was announced at the last formation committee meeting that we would like it on the agenda, which is um, to uh, consider uh, legal counsel and a request for proposals for legal counsel. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to ask the full board um, was what sort of a process they wanted to see for this. Um, because it is, uh, in some of the conversations that I've had with folks in the community, um, when previous or when other uh, local agencies have gone and done uh, an RFP, uh, they have had attorneys who sit on their selection committee, uh, so that there is some sort of uh, uh, more advising in the process than say just me, Bob and George, or me, Natalie and Ethan, if it were the executives. Uh, you know, selecting who it is that is going to be uh, like performing legal services for the district. Um, so, I don't know if anyone has any ideas about um, how we'd find that, and if anyone has any comments about the process. Like I said, I wanted to bring it before the board first. Um, and this is a, a draft RFP. It doesn't have everything that the uh, final one I would imagine would contain, and it probably has even more. This is a pretty extensive one uh, that essentially is like a full contract for like all legal services that you could get. Um, one of my priorities is to have uh, the work that we get for legal services be done pro bono. Um, so uh, I wanted to bring it to the board to show it to everyone and ask for comment. Thank you. Is there any other comment, Director Freeman? Um, so I guess. So the idea is that we are going to provide feedback on this now, and then also direct formation committee to look at it, provide feedback, then bring it back to us to look at it again? Yeah, well I would hope that formation committee would be able to 
bring a draft RFP that has our name on it back to the board, something that's more final than this. This is just a sample, and there are other RFPs on the CSDA website and other RFPs out there. Uh, so the main thing that, um, I mean, I know as a district we don't have any money. Uh, and so as you mentioned, I'm trying to, sorry, the sun's directly in my own. <laughs> I'm trying to get uh, uh, the services pro bono. Um, one of my understandings is, is that um, the one a reason why a lawyer might, and this is from having talked to, not the aforementioned lawyer, just having talked to a lawyer about this, um, that the reason why a lawyer might provide pro bono legal counsel to a district such as ours um, is uh, under the thought process that at some point later when we have funding, uh, they will be um, contracted by us. Uh, and, and so essentially it's like setting them up for, for either a guaranteed contract later or just a highly likelihood contract because they have all of the expertise working with us. Uh, maybe that's something that we would want to include in our request for proposal in order to up the, I don't know, like sweeten the pot for somebody bothering to go to the effort of submitting a proposal? Because as it currently stands, I mean, it does kind of feel like going to a lawyer and saying, hey, you know, this is probably one of the more challenging things you could be, you know, messing around with in public law in the area. Would you like to do it for free? <laughs> uh, so just something that would actually make them care. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have a, a comment? Dr. guys? Well, you know, I... Uh, the, this this is great to bring back to the formation committee, but you know, like I went and pulled one special district contract, just called friends and said, give me your legal contract, let me see what it says. Well, the billing rate is 87 and a half billable hours per month at $200 an hour, based monthly rate means 17500 And it's basically to do the same thing that's in this proposal. Mm -hmm. So to, to think that's for a big district. To, to do it for a district our size, though, has all the same general pitfalls. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, do we want this person to attend every board meeting? Do we want mm -hmm. them to review every contract? Do we want them to review every document that comes across our desk? You know, I think we really need that. That's not realistic that we're going to get somebody. The, the last thing you read every one of these contracts and you say, to the attorney, what kind of insurance do you have? And we want you to have a million dollars blanket coverage, and then we don't want you to get paid. And you go, that is just pretty problematic. And so, you know, we as a district are flying blind without an attorney. I agree, very important thing. But, you know, at the county, I read code every day. And I was the accountant and had to read code every day. You know, we're, blind, we're flying without an accountant. We're flying without a general manager. Okay. And so every one of those roles in an organization is really important. So I think when we bring this back, we really need to think about, can we get a pro bono accountant? Can we get a pro bono general manager? Can we get a pro bono attorney? And each of them is gonna be very, I think we're gonna have to change the scope of work to be something that somebody would come to work for us, and my idea is that that person comes to work for us as an independent contractor to advise us. They're going to come help advise us. We're not going to tell them what to do. They're going to come in and watch over us, and we want them to watch over us on the really big things. I don't want to go out for an election in a year from November and not do the election documents right and blow the election because we didn't do something legally right. So I think we have to think about in the formation committee kind of what that scope of services should be that we want to go out and ask for pro bono work for and then bring that back to the board. And I, and I think it has to be something realistic. It can't, it can't, I don't think we could do what Chase talked about and go out there and ask for all these services and say, well, what would that really cost? And, and just to get feedback. But I don't think that idea of promising an attorney a job three years from now for a set time is, is not, I, I don't want to say it's not ethical. I just don't think it's practical because we, we may not like the advice that attorney is giving us. Um, and so I, I think this is going to be a difficult thing for the formation committee to do, but I think it's worth tackling. I'm, I'm ready to 
you know, I've been churning around some ideas and trying to say, well, out of this laundry list, what do we really want them to do, and what do we, what do we all think are important? You know, I mean, we got some Brown Act letters the other day that are they that important? Do we really need an attorney to go advise that? I, I know what I did. I went and picked up the government. I went up, picked up the Brown Act, recorded it, and read it, and go, okay, I, I kind of get it, <laughs> but. You know, we, I, I think we can't have an attorney for every little thing. We do, and, and I don't think you want to be a board run by attorneys. We, mm -hmm. we directors need to be advised by attorneys, but we have a responsibility to make those fiduciary decisions and some of those legal decisions with our own conscience. So, uh, anyways, but surely referred back. Director Brent. I just want to say, Bobby, I, I agree with you completely, 100%. And I especially appreciate your comments on the scope of work um, because uh, in bringing this to the board, like I said, this is a full-on contract that contains a lot of things. Um, this is a con this is retaining an attorney. Um, I wanted to have all of the different things uh, that I thought an attorney could do for us spelled out there so that I think a lot of what the committee is going to be doing is prioritizing which ones uh, we really need. Uh, because you're right, e even in this scenario where we start getting letters, um, you know, we'll get letters and we'll be able to read them and go, well, we don't need, you know, legal counsel to look this over. This is baloney. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that, um, I think the committee is going to be really good for that. Uh, and I'm glad to hear that we, I've gotten the ball rolling uh, yeah. by bringing this. You did. It's good. Thank you. Director Kuhn. I want to be very clear because I think there was some miscommunication. I. My comment about was of, of like how to incentivize request for yeah, was based on the seeing this. Like yeah, I yeah. wasn't, I didn't, I didn't actually think this was the greatest starting point. But no, no, going no, through I the formation committee, I thought that you'd fix that. So I don't want now to be like, well, Jay was like, you know, thinking no, 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 of no, no, doing no, this full request for proposal. I totally agree with you. Well, but I, I didn't take yeah. it that way either. Right, right. If I said that that way, I didn't mean it. Okay, Thank you. I'll, move, I'll move to direct this uh, to the formation committee to review the sample. Do you want to read uh, A directly? Just to, for uh, clarification. Uh, direct, direct the formation. Can you just pick, cut and paste? Yeah, that's fine. Do you want to verb, do you want to vocalize it though, just for the video to recording? My, to hear my voice. Just for the vo yeah, their video that's recording. It, yeah. Thanks. Direct the formation committee to review the sample request for proposals on legal services and return to the board with a draft request for proposal. Is there a second? Second. There is a second by Director Freeman. We are now going to out, go out to the public for comment. Is there any comment by the public? Awesome. Thank you. We are now going to go to a vote if there is no other discussion. Is there any further discussion? Thank you. We are now going to go to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? So order. Director Bertrand absent. Moving on to direct, uh, to item 4.5, discuss obtaining a district liability insurance policy. Discuss options for obtaining liability insurance for the district and consider directing the chairperson of the formation committee to solicit information or presentation from the special district, district, district risk management authority or providers. See attachment E when anyone would like to speak on this. Yeah, so I'll start off by apologizing. There is no attachment E uh, and I accidentally put that in there. <laughs> so don't think that you're missing anything uh, from your uh, agenda package. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I probably had you uh, stay at, staying up late, uh, losing sleep over that one. Um, Thank you for coming. Um, but I think uh, if any, if everyone would, um, I don't know if folks have done some research on the Special District Risk, risk Management Authority. Um, I can pull up their website and kind of give uh, a little bit of an introduction. Uh, so this is from their website. The Special District Risk, risk Management Authority has provided comprehensive coverage protection with solid, consistent risk management solutions to California public agencies for over 30 years. Our primary objective is to serve as a single resource to meet all your risk management needs, and we currently serve over 660 individual public agency members with, only, or with over $4 billion in member-insured property. 
quality coverage protection and risk management services, responsive claims management, as well as tailored safety and loss prevention programs provide members with an un I don't know why I can't read today. <laughs> with an unequaled risk management program. Um, so uh, one of the things that doesn't mention is that this, um, instead of being a, a private insurance company, is a, a joint powers agreement. Um, and that is how they uh, handle uh, their thing. So it's a little bit different, uh, like I said, than it being private. Um, if I can click on the other uh, thing to see if I can, if anyone well, else wants well, to comment, quick, go ahead. Yeah, um, my understanding was this was put on the board, on the board's agenda in order to uh, notice the fact that we wanted our board president to have the uh, Special District Risk Management Authority make a presentation to us and or present us with some options in terms of insurance coverage. Is that your understanding? The yeah. item 4.5 uh, explicitly says directing the chairperson of the formation committee to solicit information or presentation from the special district's risk management or authority or other providers as listed there. So I believe that that out was the intention if we're going to be clear. I think the hope would be that we would get some sort of a presentation in committee and then be able to bring back recommendations to the board. You know, this is one time I might think that we think should have the whole matter. full board hear it I because uh, the, because it involves the board members personally. Um, I would not want us to filter. I agree. Through a committee. Do you believe though that the chairperson should still solicit the information and presentation to instead of putting that on Ethan yeah. again? Poor, poor Ethan. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Ethan, at a, at, that. A, at, an earlier, <laughs> at an earlier meeting, we actually put this on Ethan. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he was, he was going to be the contact to the Special Districts Association. I'm sure he's but I, I think we're more than happy to bring it back to the Formation Committee. And we might make be making this overcomplicated because I did talk to the county's risk manager. In 15 minutes, he assessed us and said, you only need general liability insurance. Mm -hmm. And he said, and here's an application to Alliant, fill it out and get a quote. And so I think the whole issue of risk management is bigger than that, you know, and we might be wanting to have them come to a presentation about a long-term look. But when you talk about a joint powers authority, this is like pooled insurance and everybody's being premium, but they're pr basically probably privately insured, just like the county is through Alliant Insurance for different kinds of coverage. And then your blanket liability when you get into these big, you know, if, if you're running a police department and you have a brutality case or something, that's, that's as, you know, SRA limits of 500,000 of occurrence, and then you have a big umbrella pool policy on top of that to cover when you have a million dollar loss or something. Honest, I, so this is I'm gonna be honest. Like I, I, know. I just so will you, I, I so appreciate your, it but your like recommendation. Woo. <laughs> so it sounds like it sounds like a, mo a motion. <laughs> can I make can I make a motion? Absolutely. Move this along. So my motion would be that we uh, direct uh, director guys direct director guys to um, solicit a um, presentation from Alliance. Well, it would probably be the insurance, don't we? Doesn't the insurance broker, don't we have to have the insurance broker there standing there and explaining what the policy is? Uh, I think I think we, we ought to do, uh, maybe we should do this. Refer this back to us. We'll contact the Special District Association. Like Spencer says, can we get a quick 15 minute phone call? What kind of presentation could you do to the full board that would yeah, the help phone us call better understand? Screen that. <laughs> have, have us better understand insurance. Would you want to come so down and do it, or is it worth their yeah. time? Yeah. And oh, by the way, if you really think we just need general liability insurance, give us an application, and the formation committee can fill them out and at least get some bids to right. to, to not make this. Just language. We articulate that yeah. into a motion. I think it's yeah, basically what we had before. I, I think that sounds like a great a, a great idea to have the committee uh, get a bunch of different quotes from different uh, insurance providers. Um, so I would say whoever makes a motion should make it broad enough to allow the committee to do so. So, do you, yeah. 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 
They're, they're not, my sense would be, this isn't like buying car insurance. There's not mm -hmm. going to be a lot of providers out there <laughs> that want to underwrite a brand new special district. And it will be some kind of, we'll get some kind of pool. But, but so the motion is to refer back to formation committee to. One second, sorry, can we just give him one second? And two quarters. Okay. And two or do you think that two well, is going to be our max? Right, I don't even say. No, to get quotes. Yeah, okay, to get quotes and to <laughs> further explore so that uh, as quickly as possible we can bring a presentation to the board that includes prices and coverage. On insurance options? Yeah, it's, I'm, I work in some insurance coverage and options. Insurance coverage and options. Awesome. I'm going to read that back and ask for a second. <sighs> Director Sir Lowe moved to refer the formation committee to get further quotes to and further explore insurance coverage and options. Uh, and options. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Director Freeman. We're now going to go to the public for discussion. Is there any discussion on our insurance options? Awesome, we're gonna come back to the board. Is there any further discussion? Alrighty, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? So ordered, Director Bertrand is absent today. We're gonna be moving on to item 4.6. Thank you. So I can introduce this item as well. Can we read uh, this? Go ahead and read then? it, sorry. Thank you. Jump in the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Statement of financial interest documents. Discuss the next steps for providing the Santa Barbara County Clerk Recorder's Office with necessary required information and documents pertaining to the disclosure of economic interest. So this is Form 700, right? Uh, yes, another awesome. form. Thanks, go ahead. Um, So I spoke to uh, Sheila Hess, who works for the uh, County Clerk Recorder's Office earlier today uh, about what we need to put in place, uh, what we need to adopt and get to them uh, so that they have something uh, to file uh, our conflict of interest or statement of financial interests, otherwise known as the Form 700 uh, against. Uh, this is something I think Bob has spoken to her about as well. Um, so what she told me is the things we need to do are first designate a filing officer. Um, that person, I think, is traditionally either the clerk or the secretary of the board. Uh, sometimes the general manager, although we do not have a general manager. Um, we need to have some sort of mailing address, uh, which is something that I believe the formation committee uh, may have on its agenda in the future, uh, based off of the comments at the last formation committee meeting. Um, and we also need to adopt a conflict of interest code um, that contains disclosure categories, uh, which is something that we've spoken about before. Uh, and it is something that is currently sitting in policy committee. Um, so Ooh. I, <laughs> I hope your computer is okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, in policy committee, we're looking at a conflict of interest code that is largely derived from uh, Goleta Water District's uh, conflict of interest code. It establishes different disclosure categories um, and um, we're continuing to parse through that. Uh, once that policy comes to the full board, uh, we're going to need to, I believe, forward it over to either the clerk recorder's office to put it on the board of supervisors agenda or to forward it over to the clerk of the board of supervisors uh, because it sounds like the board of supervisors needs to take some sort of action. It'll probably be an administrative item uh, to incorporate it as something that the clerk recorder can file our statements of economic interest against. Very bureaucratic, I know. Um, so let's see. Um, let's see what else I have. Um, I know there have been some concerns from the public about um, the interns and their, uh, whether or not they need to file uh, statements of financial interest. Um, and there was a specific comment uh, from someone about uh, the district filing a Form 804, which is something that is required of state and local government agencies uh, to identify new positions that have been created at the district. Um, and uh, given that the district has not created any new positions, um, I don't think that, that is something that is necessary. Um, the interns that we have that are assigned to individual directors uh, are employees of the university, um, and they are 
uh, not in fact employees of the district. Um, they perform uh, clerical and uh, assistance to directors um, and they're not involved in the agency's decision making process. Um, so I don't think that that is something that is required of us by law. If the policy committee so wished, then it is something that they could uh, decide. But I wanted to clear up, I just wanted to speak a little bit about the legal issue uh, in that sense. Um, but other than that, um, I think that it'll also, it, I, I was glad to hear from Sheila that all the directors had filed uh, the Form 700s Ooh. and that uh, we had all filed them on time and that she is holding a copy. Uh, she just needs additional information uh, from the board regarding, uh, like I said, the mailing address, the filing officer, uh, and the conflict of interest code. <laughs> That's very nice. I'm glad that they marked it that day. Yes, Dr. So, Geis. I, I followed the county's conflict of interest policy. It's like, like you know, it's, it's kind of like a pain, but I, I get the form, I, I get the concept, and I have a copy here of just Galita Waters, and I have Galita West, and I have Galita West, they call it a biannual um, review of their conflict of interest code. So once you get into the county's loop, then biannually you have to update your conflict of interest code. And that update is just simply saying, oh, we added this new finance officer position. It should be part of our conflict, part of someone who needs to be a disclosure category. And you know, like in the uh, Goleta Water, it's the district directors, the general manager, the assistant general manager, secretary, treasurer, attorney, administrative manager, it's all their managers. If you get over to Goleta West Sanitary, it's simply the board of directors, the superintendent, consultants, the chief inspector, and the office manager. So you can tell by these disclosure categories when you study them, someone like the interns, would they, they're not part of this, this, this conflict of interest code. And then on each of them, there's just one, two, three, four, five categories of disclosure. So you guys could, you know, cut and paste these things, find out, you know, the forms and or get a couple other copies over at the county from Sheila Hass and the policy committee should be able to. The one different thing they did is when we put together our code, we did it by reference to the other codes. And if you look at uh, Lead of Water, they actually in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 10 paragraphs. They more uh, descriptively describe what those conflicts are as part of their policies. And so by doing it by reference, you, you, by doing it this way, you better understand what those potential conflicts of interest are than by just doing it by reference. And so you can just take a look at that and whoever, the, that's Jay's the chairman, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you need me to interpret any of that, just call Wait, me. Wait, what am I supposed to do with this? Someone just oh, pa pass it to, it to you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, Thanks. <laughs> so to provide a couple, one clarification. Um, Spencer mentioned that this was currently being talked about in the policy committee. So on the first meeting of the policy committee, um, I had just thrown on the agenda essentially at the last minute yeah. that I determined that legally we had to have a conflict of interest yep. code and that good, good the reference would succeed in doing it. And so, um, and, and I just didn't want it to be fundamentally out of compliance with that and we just quickly accepted that and moved right. on. We were unable to talk about it at our last meeting um, because uh, I did not think to put it on our agenda and we, I thought maybe we could discuss it during the meeting I, under one of our agenda items, but we decided we could not. So we actually haven't discussed yeah. it. It's not like it's stuck in the committee or something. It's just that with the next yeah, meeting yeah. We, will, we will look at this. Um, and uh, I, sadly, I don't think I can call you for clarifications, though, because we're yeah, talking about policy committee, and that would <laughs> call Sheila. <laughs> yeah. Call Sheila okay, for that's great. That's Three great to hear that there's somebody I can, uh, I, I can talk to about clarification. Yeah. And I also, I agree with you that it would be better to have, uh, to include this. I mean, there are the same reasons that Natalie has brought up for um, uh, generally trying to make the policy manual more inclusive of everything uh, going forward, as opposed to so you don't have to, uh, um, I mean, you should hopefully know something about the law, but it is a lot of law, and so if you follow the policy manual, hopefully you will be in law. Right? I think from the of water, I have a, a, a Word document on that, so if you want to just say, send me the Word document, let me know. Uh, maybe, uh, or just I don't know how that, I'm not one of those 
I try to be one of those brown eyed people. I don't know if I am, but maybe if you sent it to the here and then we sent it there. Yeah, does right. that work a little better? No, that's I, I how does it work? Is that word document in this stack? Yeah, the word okay. document's there. Okay, so what does I'm gonna do is, add, is, is I'm going to pass <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to glance yeah. at it and I'm gonna pass it to the, uh, Director Hedges. I'm gonna ask him to flip through it. Just, no, just flip through it. I think it has to be in no. our minutes for next week. No, no, so no hold on a second. In the hold on a second. And then I'm going to have, give it to Natalie now. He's, he's going through the process yeah, of making it a public okay. document. He's making it a document. Yeah, I'm making it a public document, and that way we have it at the next yeah. meeting. And then it's also going <laughs> no, to be to recorded <laughs> by the minute taker, correct? I mean, uh, not by the, yeah. it, to be recorded. So, in the minutes for so right the now, week. As, as the secretary of the board, one of the functions that I do is I keep uh, public records, um, and that is now a public record. Yes. <laughs> there you go. So no, I, it's it's good because it's been right. seen by quorum now. Yeah, we, we have nice. majority of the directors have now seen this as a public record. So yes, we get, we will get to see this right. policy. <laughs> yes. Okay. I like um, that. I'm learning as I go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nice so anything else about this? Um, Thanks. Oh, and, and so and so, uh, I don't know. If, I I'm curious though because when we talk about this policy. Me if, if uh, other people agree with uh, Bob's uh, commentary on the interns, um, not the only the only thing I can come up with is that because we have supervisor, I forgot the word for it in the in the in the MOU, but we have like we we have control over the supervision super work supervision. That's what it is. We have work supervision over them that maybe they are partially on employee so of some form, but yeah. Just one more comment. Director Guys, I had, I had fifty employees in the auditor controller's office. Um, I had three people that were subject to those conflict of interest disclosures. I had ten work huh? interns working for me at any given time, and I had, you know, all kinds of new accountant auditors that come out of the colleges and all different levels, including supervisors, including managers, that un aren't subject to those conflict of interest disclosures. They're, they're really about us making management decisions and having economic conflicts of interest. And so it's at a much higher level than, than the, just staff working. I currently us. think I agree with you. I was just asking if other people agree with you so that that way we feel like, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I'll Thanks, say Brad. wholeheartedly that I do. Um, I like poured over the FPPC regulations and the government code section, I think it's 78,000 at SEEK, um, or uh, maybe it's 80 something. In any event, um, it, the interns, I don't think in any way would be considered employees. Um, they're, at first I thought could be an argument for uh, them to be called consultants, uh, but then upon looking up the definition of a consultant as derived by the FPPC in their regulations section uh, 18700.3, um, I don't think that there's any way that we would be able to call them consultants. Consultants are, um, uh, individuals who pursuant to a contract with a state or local government agency make a government decision uh, whether to approve a rate, rule, or regulation, adopt or enforce a law, uh, issue, deny, suspend, or evoke any permit, license, application, certificate, approval, order, or similar authorization or entitlement. So I'm not going to read through them all, but essentially the interns do clerical yeah. stuff. It's and I perfect. think that's very, uh, I think it's very obvious. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to have to force our interns to file this annoying documentation, and I also um, would like to be able to occasionally buy an intern lunch and not have to make that a problem. So I like this uh, thought process. And I uh, will note that George uh, is shaking his head no, I like that too. Awesome. <laughs> um, Okay, could someone please articulate some action that we'd like to take on this item? Um, you, there could be a motion made to uh, designate um, a director as the filing officer uh, for financial interest documents. Can whether, that be you? Whether that would be me. <laughs> it's, it's what I, I've been interfacing. So I'm sorry. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Second. So moved. That's fine. Is there a second? Second. Let's articulate that and I'll just figure one moment. Okay, so can we please just articulate the, the motion, please, for the minutes? We Did I make the motion? Yeah. yeah. We're going to direct that <laughs> Spencer Brandt be the filing officer for the conflict of interest filing. There is a motion to direct Director Brandt to become the filing officer for 
the conflict of interest forms. Or maybe we should change that instead of director Brandt, the secretary for the secretary. Yeah, I think that'd be better. Right? For as, that as the filing officer, do we want to say for the conflict of interest or just as the or filing, filing officer, officer so that we can kind of, you know, sprinkle other stuff in there? Are we allowed to do that? You come uh, with that? Well, this is a pretty specific thing. Okay. Um, okay. Because it's a technical term, the filing officer. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. And the second was by Director Thurlow, correct? Thank you. We're going to be going out to the public for comment. Is there any comment by the public? Thank you. We're going to be going back to the board. Is there any other comment? I called the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? So ordered. Director Brandt, absent. Oh, no, I'm here. Bertrand. 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 Sorry. Ooh, You're okay. Woohoo. All right. Moving on to yes. item 4.7. Receive an update from the policy committee. Receive an update on the progress of the policy committee and forward items of interest to the committee. I'd like to make this clear that the items related to acquiring uh, um, the items related to this are just receiving an update and then we can forward items. We're not going to be taking action on any of the items that are brought up within this discussion item. Uh, can we please receive an update from the chair? Uh, policy first. Policy. Policy first, okay. Um, so at the uh, policy committee meetings, um, we've been going over trying to construct uh, initial district policies. Um, we've been um, talking about uh, organization at the top level. Um, so at the last policy committee meeting, uh, uh, Director Grant um, provided an outline for um, a, um, uh, how policies could fit into a structure, which is similar also to the kind of thing that uh, Bob has asked for in the past. Um, this is uh, something that we'll be discussing at our next policy committee meeting um, and, uh, and, and fleshing out and uh, possibly adopting it as, a, as a, both an outline and a, and a work plan uh, for what policy committee will be doing going forward. Um, we uh, spent, at the last meeting, one thing that was notable is, is that um, we once again looked at the <coughs> slander word um, as requested by uh, Natalie. Okay. Uh, so, so we now look at that, uh, I guess it's, it's three now. times, and we've removed it. <laughs> so, uh, I know Jeff will appreciate that too if he's here. <laughs> yes, uh, Jeff's no longer in the room, but Thank you. Uh, so he's somewhere he's out there screaming yet. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not certain if there's, any, if there's anything else that uh, Spencer thinks would be important to bring up from the meetings. Thank you. Does anyone have any action that they'd like to send to the policy committee or comments on what uh, action they've taken prior to this? Anyone? If we're going to move to the public before coming back to the board. I might have something, but I'm forgetting it. So All right, then we're going to move to the public on. and then we'll come back to the board. Is there any comment from the public on the update from the policy committee or any suggestions of uh, items of interest? Thank you. All right, coming back to the board, is there anything else that you all would like to say? Uh, Director Freeman. Um, I'm, just, I'm glancing through our next agenda items to see if there's anything. Uh, Have they been publicly noticed? They've not been publicly noticed. But so I don't, I, are we allowed to talk about I'm, that I'm now? Just Director Secretary no, he, Brent? Yeah, he's just mentioning just what. Oh. This was stuff that was said in the public meeting. Board. Awesome, yeah. thank you. And, but the answer is that nothing particularly that I'm like, oh yeah. Awesome. Anything? Um, all right. All right. Formation. Thank you so much. We're going to be moving on to the formation committee. Thank you, guys. This is awesome. Okay. 4.8, receive update from formation committee. Receive an update on the progress of the formation committee and four dice and items of interest to the committee. Once again, I'd like to reiterate that we're not going to be taking actions that are brought up right now to be forwarded to the agenda. Dr. Geis? So, you know, one of the issues at the last meeting was to reorganize the formation committee from a standing committee to an ad hoc committee. They referred it back to formation. We dropped that as an issue and said, we're not going to uh -uh. look at this time <laughs> and make it ad hoc. Listening to the public and all the concern, we think it needs to continue to be a standing committee. Um, we, um, I'm working with the county. I have a fund number that I requested of them today. It's fund number 3480. I gave them a title to uh, label the fund, which is has to have some acronyms because it's limited to 30 characters. Um, I've contacted the treasurer. They're going to give us a deposit book with three copies of a deposit ticket so you can make a deposit at a local bank. Then you also have to make a deposit to the treasury and you have to make an accounting transaction if we select 
to authorize the accounting service. So um, at the next meeting, we're going to put some items on the uh, agenda, the formation committee, to maybe recommend that one of the district officers be becomes a finance director mm -hmm. and maybe awesome. I'd be the assistant finance director so we can have some internal controls and <laughs> two parties involved in most financial transactions. Do we get business? Wise. That's amazing. <laughs> and we, get, we get business because we get some donations. Um, you know, we, we talked about a plan to solicit donations. Uh, part of that's on the next agenda item. Um, and so we're working that through. I think we have another item to follow up on in terms of um, not just asking the university, but I don't that think. will be in our next uh, special meeting. So okay. we can't really touch on those. Gotcha. Now. Thank yeah. you. And then um, we had a nice presentation by IBCDC in terms of their role, and we're going to work on that going out into the future. Um, we're still working on designing, now that we have Will on board, designing a, a format to try and work through all the government code sections with, you know, here's the code, here's the actions we've taken, I here's the that. committee that accomplished it, that. and here's Sorry. something, <laughs> some actions we need to do to keep on going and making sure, and hopefully by December, that's my goal, uh, to get all the way through there that we have some plans of actions, you know, some of those action plans might be long-term strategy, you know. Uh, it's like the, the issue that uh, we brought last week on, you know, uh, solid waste. When, when is the strategy thing to say we as a group want to take over solid waste? So we'll, we'll, that comes later in that, but we're working on that. Um, you know, we're, we have this item about the office space, we'll, we'll come back to that. and. Um, we're happy to have Will assigned working for Spencer and hopefully we get some stuff done. So that's kind of our report back. Thank you so much. Is there anyone that would like to, has any questions or would like to take any action to direct anything to the formation committee, um, items of interest to add to the agenda? I kind of got a, a yeah. couple that, now that we get this proposal for legal services, I wonder if on the formation committee I should put something on there similar for a general manager. You know, it's funny, you took the words right out of my mouth. That's um, awesome. I think that in, yeah. in the, um, the, the first part of your report, which was talking about how um, the formation committee decided that it's not in our best interest as the district, uh, it's not in the, public be the public's best interest to make this an ad hoc committee, that this should be something that has uh, publicly noticed meetings to make sure that it's tran as transparent as possible because that's what the public uh, was really showing support for. Um, I think we we may have discussed this a little bit in the meeting, but uh, that that's that's something that we that we wholly respect and we, we tabled the item in, indefinitely. Um, but we also discussed the fact that uh, in doing so, um, the formation committee uh, becomes uh, a committee, uh, for lack of a better term. It becomes a piece of bureaucracy. Uh, it's not something that can move quick on its feet. Uh, when we need things to get done. And uh, I think that the issue of trying to find some sort of a general manager uh, to volunteer for us uh, is something that we should definitely start talking about. Uh, and if we want to start those discussions in committee, then I think that's a great idea. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Is there any other comment or anything that we'd like to add? So is that actually going to be directed to add the, can we direct the uh, secretary to add that uh, I, item? I put it, yeah. I put it down and I'll propose it on the Woo agenda. Thank you. Yeah. Director Thurlow. Um, so as we move to the next stage of um, internships, uh, where do we want to put the, uh, how we're going to develop a larger internship program? And specifically, how are we going to deal with City College, which is uh, which is going to, I believe, be ready to have an internship program, but we'll need a, a separate MOU. Um, and how do we deal with nonprofits that will be uh, that we're obviously all going to be soliciting to set up internship programs, not unlike the homeless one. So you'd like the formation, formation committee. So you'd like the formation committee to deal with all of those things. Nonprofits, uh, interns, etc. 
It's really about um, <coughs> the question of how many more interns can we add this summer? How much are they going to cost? And where, what would they do that would be um, productive uh, for, the, for the district? <coughs> or if three interns is all everybody wants, then... Does everybody think that that should go to formation? Uh, okay. Dr. Freeman. Can we comment on that? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It, it's items that you believe should be agendized. We can't actually talk about the content itself. If you believe it should be agendized, it's much more of a yes or no kind of thing than the actual content. I, I don't think that that's a formation committee issue. Okay. Um, personally, when it comes to, because I know that was like a lot of things, when it talks about the bigger internship program, separate MRU for nonprofits, um, and SBCC, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I think that some of those aspects, I think that that is up to the discretion of the chair. Do you believe that this falls under your purview? Each of these items, I, internship, I separate MRU, and SBCC. We can look at them as individuals. Well, I think I can go into the code sections if we're going to if we're going to say that the code sections of formation is formation can look at any of the code sections, you know, definitely bringing on not really employees, but these interns are just part of running the district mm -hmm. and the budget that goes along with it. So there, you know, in my mind, I think it can be part of formation. The the question I have is. It is formation the most effective place to put it? I know we got rid of the internship committee, and I thought we had an ad hoc internship committee. We have an ad hoc internship committee um, that just to manage with the intern, the current interns. Sort of, yes. Yeah, but that's much more of a. a it's a an, it's an, it's it's an a ad hoc. <laughs> it's an ad hoc committee. Uh, it's not something that we we never planned on discussing uh, the structure of future MOUs uh, with different organizations for interns. So, do so it may be advantageous for us to consider either uh, another committee or forwarding this to formation. Um, I'll say that um, I think that in whichever way we do it, um, we're going to have to uh, do the MOU process in um, a like as much of an open way as possible. And I think that given that now we have more of our ducks in the row, that'll be a lot easier to do. So do you believe that that falls under the purview of formation? That's kind of like, do you believe that these separate items, even if they don't actually fall under the purview, I feel like you're welcome to send them back to the board if you feel like this is kind of hits a dead end. What do you think? And I know you all have a lot on your plate. If you feel like this is something that shouldn't be addressed now, then. Well, well the summer, I think the George is saying. My issue is, is the it, summer it's is coming. coming. Oh, it's okay. Worth we're, we're now at the point where if this board wants more staff, then it's got to decide that really quickly okay. because the process at UCSB is such... Quick, I get that. Yeah, you know that. So, But if the board doesn't want more staff, so then we agendize it as a full board discussion in two weeks. The challenge there is that... And, uh, and we really are getting into the content, which is... We can't get into the content. Right. My idea is that I just don't think that that should be a board discussion. I think it should fall under the formation committee, because if it works, it doesn't. You guys can decide the MOU, because that actually has to do more with, like, the... The, the, the biggest brainstorm yeah. part of this whole thing, mm -hmm. not the MOU and stuff, it's if we take on 10 people, what are we going to have them do? Because, you know, 10 people... We, that a, we can't get there's a lot content. of people and it's a lot yeah. of projects and it's a lot of projects for us to manage but it's a great resource to do we can't get in the content of if we, we want so interns or not so it either goes to the committee or it stays here and same with like the nonprofits and SBCC so let's look at these as individuals do you want the internship program within the formation committee or should we refer that to the larger uh, the larger directors or the ad hoc that's totally up to your discretion but it has to be kind of looked at individually what do you think? Yeah, well, the chair. other thing is, is I'm going to be gone for two weeks in June, so I get worried that if we try and get this into the formation committee, it, would we be a block on getting it done before? Maybe it's a project the full board should work on. Okay, thank That's you. My director Brandt. So maybe we can um, designate a director um, to start 
um, like, or mm. maybe not a director. I don't know if um, we can do that. No, yeah, well, we can't do it under this item, you're right. Um, no, we can't what the formation committee would be able to discuss in its jurisdiction as being the committee in charge of, like, um, setting up both the administrative structure but also the processes for things is what the process is going to look like for the internship program. Yeah. Would that be, I mean, are you really concerned about it, the process going too slow on this one and us getting left behind? I think that also, oh yeah, it's totally up to you, but sometimes things get kind of stalled up in here because we don't understand exactly like the background to it and don't really have the option to kind of do prior research. <coughs> so even if you could get the ball rolling and bring a proposal that we could come to a decision on, and I understand that you're leaving for a couple of weeks, but it's totally up to you. If you don't feel like this is something that we should handle, then let's just move on to separate MOU and well, SBCC. If I start prioritizing things on the formations committee together, and I, I say, well, getting a general manager that I can't afford and getting a county council that I can't afford and getting 10 interns that somebody else is going to help us fund. <laughs> I know what my priority is. My priority is to to get resources and bring them on board to help us get tasks done. So you believe so, we should bring, be assigning this to the formation committee for the so, upcoming week. So why don't we come bring it back to the formation committee and in formation committee, we can think of a scope of services that the formation committee could study that would be. A meme, uh, you know that that we could bring back to the board and say, okay, board, yeah, what do you yeah. think? I think and, that's and so true. that we don't have the thing that well, it doesn't belong there. I don't want it. It doesn't belong there. You get uh, excited to do the work. Yeah, Director uh, Freeman. I believe the formation committee adopted a regular meeting schedule, okay, um, and the next meeting is Friday. It is. That means that you actually can't notice that this on that meeting. Uh, we didn't send up, we're not done. Right, but you actually have to notice that meeting 72 hours in advance. 72 hours doesn't even start until, what time would it start on Friday? Three days. So it would start today on? What time's your meeting? 10 a.m. Uh, so it would have had to been sent out by 9 or 30 this morning or so? Wait, I'm going to clarify that that's actually when the Let's double check on that. Was that actually adopted has. For so I thought that the regular meeting schedule was adopted for Mondays. Oh yeah, we talked about this. We talked about Friday or Monday two weeks ago, didn't we? Friday versus Monday, so it was either Monday at 10 a.m. or Friday at 10 a.m. I thought we'd do the first and third of every Friday. We can go back and look at it. So it yeah, it's I, been I, a. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty certain that Bob is right, and I, I, and and like, and I was like, oh, I wish I could tell you that yeah. that was not the right place, the right time to put it, but I couldn't tell you because I'm not on that committee. But I, mm. so this is the only opportunity I've had to do it. <laughs> Indirectly. Yeah. Okay. So it is Monday. Well, it'll be something that the formation oh, committee yeah, can right. have on its agenda. Is. Um, we can't put out any <laughs> agenda for Friday, right? Well, it sounds like that meeting is going to have to be canceled, but as the chair of the committee, you are at your discretion to call a special meeting on Monday. Okay, so in that case, then, you could you could talk about this item. Then, then my, my response to Natalie is I'm still not certain. That, I don't think formation committee is the right place to put it, but... Where do you want to put it? I don't... I mean, I, I have a George Bry thing source. Somebody brought up the idea of making another committee. With but I understand. I'm just, I'm just telling you. I We're not agenda is to like make another committee. Yeah, I'm just telling you. I don't like. See, yeah, because I think the concern of scope increase, increasing formation committee to do everything the district does just because the district doesn't have anything yet, and so everything is being formed, so everything is done. By <laughs> everything. Yeah. that is my issue. I mean, like, yeah. one of the meetings of formation committee. Well, I think yeah. trying to do policy. Like, I, do I, I agree. I tried to do an engagement <laughs> committee, and that got shut down. So. All right. Okay. Well, we either have to. <laughs> still around. <laughs> All right. It's definitely still around. All right. Well, either way, we're going to decide here <coughs> if it is or is not going to be sent to the formation committee. And the chair, your recommendation uh, as the formation committee chair, what would be your recommendation? It does or does not go there? I, I, th I think if, if we can hear it, we should take a shot in formation committee when we have this some time about putting a nice scope of services awesome together that we could bring back to this board of how we can bring on 10 interns let's do it if that sounds great all I right mean, so we're sending it there that would be my highest priority is to get to 10 more resources me too <laughs> that sounds like a dream all right well okay that we don't necessarily perfect. need a motion for that are there obvious. i know yeah, are you good okay the awesome board. is there anything else that we'd like to add to the formation committee agenda even though we've already put a lot on their plate Go to the public. That's okay. The formation committee is hungry. Coming back. <laughs> Anything else from the <laughs> directors? All right, we're going to be moving on to the future meeting dates and future agenda items. I'd also like to be clear that we're about to hit on this in our special meeting agenda. We're going to do it in a little, uh, which starts at 8.30 p.m. 
Um, yes. Uh, I actually, uh, I, I, I really will stress that people should do that during this item, because it's not, not during the special meeting agenda. Um, I, I do not believe that we really should be talking about next agenda items during the special meeting agenda for next agenda. I agree. Items. Good. I agree. Let's do it. All right. Is there anything else for future agenda items? I think we should talk about business cards because it came up. Great idea. I'd love a business card. Yeah. <laughs> Or even, I don't even need it to say my name. But then again, we don't have a phone number for anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one more suggestion on the future business item. Yep, go ahead. I, I'm, I haven't looked at the code again, but I need to look at the code. But I think we have to adopt a budget pretty soon. I think we have to get prepared to adopt a budget for next fiscal year. And we probably need to oh adopt gosh. a budget for this year <laughs> if we're going to start spending money. Um, yeah. And so. I, you know, it's going to have to become a priority that you do need to adopt the budget by code by a certain date. So yeah, that's great. Okay, That'll is there anything the else? Director Zillow? If you know most no. special districts, no, they're in the mid middle of budget cycles right now. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right, Director Freeman. Anything for next agenda? Director Hedges. Awesome. We're going to be going to the public. Is there anything that you'd like to add to the next agenda? Uh, I, I did. I had All right, something. coming back to the board, Dr. Yes, Thurlow. Thank you. I had a. Um, I would like to. Uh, I would like us to agendize a report from the Santa Barbara Rental Housing Task Force. Ooh, that's a great on idea. With uh, what kind of services <laughs> we could um, obtain from them to uh, to fulfill our mission on um, the what's our Ten mediation. Ten mediation. Right, thank That's you. great. Awesome. Is there anything? Oh, Director Freeman. Yeah, um, I, I, maybe next meeting, maybe not. Um, uh, I, I'm, I will say we should do this sooner. Um, so uh, I, I know that the third district office has uh, pledged three thousand dollars for MOU, for a um, municipal advisory council. Uh, maybe we should actually hear from them on that. Get a report That's from what the good. thought process is, and then on our end, we can start talking about what our next steps would be for actually getting that. Shout about a Mac. So, all right, is there any other comment from the board before we go out to the public? All right, going out to the public. I can see you wanting to talk. Anything? Yes? No? Come back. Okay. I'm sorry, because you were no longer sitting over there, I didn't realize you were still here. Okay. All right, wait, is there any other comment from the public? <laughs> comment from the public, coming back to the board, Director Geis. Well, I think. Jay brings up a great point about us getting that going because if there's funding available for this year that we need to yeah. get before the county closes out their their fiscal year, we want to um, be in a position to have done some work on that to be able to draw the funds Absolutely. and get them into our treasury. To so can you confirm what will be agendized for next meeting before we move on? Uh, at the next meeting, uh, among other things, there will be items uh, regarding business cards. Um, adopting a budget uh, for the, uh, I believe it would be the 2017-2018 fiscal year. Um, re uh, receiving a report from the Santa Barbara Rental Housing uh, Mediation Task Force. Um, I can reach out to them and ask them to uh, send a representative to the next meeting. Um, a report from the 3rd District Office on the Municipal Advisory Council and the status of uh, that previous commitment. I can reach out to that office and see if we can get a representative. Can see we know. have one here now. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Um, and uh, th those are the things uh, that have been asked of it. Um, but I think, with, yeah, that's all Is there that's anything else that we'd like to add? Anything, anything, I'm about to move on. All right, we're going to be moving on to adjournment. Can anyone please motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Director Thurlow. Um, we are now, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstention. So order. Director Bertrand is absent this evening. We will be having a special meeting at 8.30 p.m. I'm going to go get a California burrito.